Here we go. Good morning. Hi, Miss Diane. It's so wonderful to see you all today over Zoom so we can teach you all about my favorite insect in the whole world, the periodical cicada. I hope you're just as excited as I am to meet some of these cicadas this morning. My name is Miss Lil and I work for the Audubon Naturalist Society. And we are so excited to be coming to you this morning from a park. And I'm gonna give you some clues so you can kind of guess what type of a habitat that I might be in this morning. But before I start my little nature walk with all of you, I wanted to explain to your teachers how this live stream is gonna work because we have so many students this morning, which is awesome. So we want to hear your questions. Oh, look, there's one of my friends. I'm not scared of them. They're very, very gentle and very, very sweet. So you might see them landing on me throughout the morning because there's lots of cicadas right here where I am. And because we have so many students and so many teachers with us today, and we want to hear all of your questions and we wanna give you a chance to ask all the questions you have about cicadas. When you have a question, please let your teacher know. And then teachers put those questions in the chat to Miss Gina, Gina Gertner. So make sure your questions are going to Miss Gina and you can put questions into that chat to Miss Gina all throughout. Mm -hmm. And we are gonna stop at certain points where she will ask those questions, okay? So we will try our very best to get all of your questions answered. Um, we are not having like a public chat so that only we will see your questions and everyone's cameras should be turned off. You should be muted to preserve our bandwidth because we are out here um, in a park using a hotspot. So if you're ready to get started, Let's do it. I'm going to turn my camera around so you can see where I am. And I'm going to let you listen to the sounds. Now, I'm not in a shopping mall, I'm not in a parking lot, I'm not on a farm. I'm not really in the city. Hmm, where could I be? I'm walking on a path and oh my goodness. What is this that I see on the path? This is unusual, my friends. Usually when I go for a walk on a path, I don't see holes like this. This might be a clue a clue about my favorite insect. So, hmm, wonder what those holes are for. And as we look around across this field, you might notice in the air, there's some insects flying around. Mm -hmm. Those are the cicadas. So as I walk, let's listen. And I'll show you something really cool that I have. Do you hear the helicopter? We can't hear it. So as we walk along this path, it's very loud here. There are lots of noises, but not just the helicopter, it's the noise of the cicadas. So let's Let's see what we find. Should we walk down this path? There's a playground up there. There's a ball field. We're just in a neighborhood park. And this is the best kind of place to look for cicadas. Maybe you have a neighborhood park near where you live. So it really doesn't matter. Um, you just have to look for old trees. And if you look up, in the trees, you know what you might see? <gasps> That's a cicada. And there's something else. Hmm. Let's look through this path here and see what we can find. I don't know if you can hear how loud they are. Miss mm -hmm. Lil, 
We yeah. are already getting a lot of questions. So maybe I can give you just a couple that you might address yes. to introduce the cicadas. So uh, Georgian is, is um, Ardalan is wondering after the cicadas emerge, do they then sleep or are they awake their whole life? That is such a good question. Um, do you know insects can sleep, but when the cicadas emerge and they become adults like this, this is the adult, they are not gonna be sleeping. They rest a little bit. They rest for about the first week and then they are very, very active. You'll see them moving, flying around and they are only adults for about one month. So they don't really need to do much sleeping or eating. Here's one that's resting. You may have another question, Miss Gina? Yes. Will a cicada be squishy like my cuddle stuff if I hold it? Well, let me show you how gentle they are. Here's a cicada. I hold it from the side like this very, very gently. I don't press on it because I don't want to smush it. Um, but that's how you hold one very gently. It's not really squishy, but it's tickly. It's kind of tickling my hand here. And then I gently let them go back where they were. But let me show you something else that's really cool on this tree. What do you think this could be? <gasps> Remember those holes that I showed you? This is what the nymph looks like. So this is what crawls out of those holes. It looks a little bit like the adult, but it doesn't have its wings yet. So this nymph needs to turn into an adult. Ah, let me put him back. And do you know what these are? This is another clue. If you see something like this, this is not, this is not alive. Here I am. Mm. This is just the shell left from the cicada nymph. The adult came out of this little crack at the top. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So if you see these shells on the ground or on the trees, I picked this one off the tree. This is not alive. This is not my favorite insect. This is just a shell from my favorite insect. Can you put your hand on the back of your neck? And you, can you feel those bones in your spine? Well, we have our skeletons inside of our bodies, but insects like these cicadas wear their skeleton on the outside. So in order for that adult to grow and get bigger, it had to burst out of the shell of the nymph. So this is just the shell that's left. Mm -hmm. So it's not so that- As we walk along this path, I see some, something interesting up ahead. I definitely see my favorite insect, but I think I also see my favorite scientist. What is he doing? There's so many cicadas here. What you doing over oh here? Goodness. Good morning, children, students. Boy, oh. this is the best cicada place I've ever seen. There are so many cicadas here. So oh, students, yeah. this is um, Dr. Lil. He's my husband, and he's also a scientist who studies insects. We call that an entomologist. And as you can see, he's not scared of cicadas either. He loves them and they love him. Listen, and he, he's a professor at the George Washington University in Washington, DC. So maybe someday you'll go to school there for college and you might have him as a professor. So Dr. Lil, we were just wondering, what are some cool things about cicadas that we should know? Well, that's a really good question. And this tree has the whole story pretty much right here. So that's why I've been looking here. Oh, the so, whole story. Wow. Yeah, so one of the most interesting things, of course, about periodical cicadas is they're among the longest living insects known on Earth. So these little insects, this little guy right here, was born 17 years ago in 2004. They have the most amazing life cycle. So 
I think you already saw perhaps um, the holes. Where we the did. We saw out. a whole lot of holes in the path. Well, here's an actual nymph that just crawled out just a little bit late. He should have been coming out last night, but there, there he is. And he's just getting ready for the big molt. And right it looks, next to him. It, wait, it looks like I can see the back of its shell cracking mm -hmm. open. Just starting. So That's does right. that mean that the adult is coming out? That's exactly it. So this is the final molt. So these insects have been underground all alone in the dark for 17 years, and they've molted four times underground. And then this is the last molt that happens above ground. It's very exciting. Right next to it, you can see one that's a little further along. Oh my goodness. You can see the adults just cracking out of the shell. But Dr. Lil, that adult looks like it's white. It doesn't look like the, uh, like, like this. Exactly right. So when they molt, they are, don't have a lot of color. They're very, very pale. And it takes them a little while to expand their wings and then to um, harden up and get their color. So by tomorrow, he'll look like a normal cicada. And there's another one right over here that just molted. Let's see. <laughs> Look how many cicadas are on this. Look stuff. at this one. Just it's still pale white. Just, oh my goodness. Oh, you can see how pretty oh, oh, a little baby deer. A baby deer hiding in the grass. Sorry. Yeah, so look at this little adult that just came out this this morning, I think. So it's got its red eyes and it's all kind of white and yellow. So this one is very, very soft. It needs to rest and harden up its skeleton again. And then it'll turn black and orange. That's exactly Look right. Look how the, soft the wings are. They're so pretty. Yeah, beautiful. So what's the special name for this stage of the life? We call that a teneral. Oh. So it's a, an adult, but it's not quite hardened up yet. So it's, it's just a newly emerged adult. And it's when they're the most vulnerable because they're very soft and they cannot yet fly. What's that on your hand? Oh, on my hand. This is... um. And another nymph that we found that you can see up really close and you can see how amazing the last stage nymph has these incredibly strong digging claws for making those for me to focus. tunnels. Okay. They are sharp. Oh, it's like Oop, sticking to very me. Very sharp. That's exactly right. And they only have those digging claws like that in the last stage. Just amazing. So this one looks like it died. It didn't make it. Yeah, that one didn't quite make it. But that's what the nymph looks like that comes out of the holes. Yep. The and you can see where the wings will be, the little wing buds. Oh, yeah. Yep. They're like little orange that's right. baby wings. That's I'm right. about this one. Miss Lil, are you yep. guys ready to talk a little bit of, about their life cycle? We have a mm -hmm. question on that. Why do they emerge every 17 years? Lucy wants to know. Lucy, why what wants to know why do they emerge every 17 years? What, what a great question, Lucy. And so we don't know exactly why it's 17 years, but we know that having a really long time between emergences means that all of the predators, all of the things that can eat cicadas, are caught unawares because it's been such a long time since they showed up. Right? So when they come out, their big strategy is to come out in such big numbers and all at once that all the birds, all the squirrels, all the chipmunks, foxes, raccoons, possums, fish, anything that can eat the cicadas, there's no possible way that they can eat all of them. And they don't know that they're gonna be coming. So having a really long time between generations means that they kind of get the surprise advantage over their predators. So, um, and the other reason is when they're underground, the nymphs are feeding on the roots of trees. So they have specialized mouth parts that um, allow them to stick their mouth parts like a soda straw just into a fine root underground. And they're feeding on mostly water and a little bit of nutrients that the tree is uptaking from the soil. So their diet is not really great. So uh, that takes them a long time to complete their development. So they have, their food is not particularly nutritious. So they, they require a pretty long time to complete development. So I have a challenge for everyone. Dr. Lil, can you yep. hold this? I will. Okay. So in my jar here, I have collected the shells 
from those nymphs, the nymphs that were living underground since 2004, since before you were born. Can you imagine? They were underground for the last 17 years. Then they emerged and they popped out of their exoskeleton for the very last final molt to become adults. So I think it's kind of fun to collect these shells. It's fun to hold them because I can see all the different parts of the insect. I can see their sharp digging legs, but this is not alive. It's just a shell. So they're fun to play with and collect. So here's my challenge. I collected and I counted how many shells I found on one small tree. And I put them in this jar. So take a close look at this jar. And if you can guess how many exoskeletons I have in this jar, and here's my hand for reference. This is how big they are. You can see this jar, take a close look. Now teachers, you can enter as many guesses as you want from your students. If you're directly in the Zoom link, you can enter your guess, but make sure you type your guess to Audubon Naturalist. That's me. So at the end of this presentation, the class that has the closest guess is going to win a prize. You're going to win these really cool cicada magnets for your whole class. Mm. So if you're an individual student, put your guess in. If you want to put in a guess for your whole class, you can do that. You can put as many guesses as you want. At the end, I'm gonna see who has the closest guest and we'll figure out which class that was. And we will give you all one of these really cool cicada Ooh. magnets for your whole class. That's so cool. Okay. So keep your guesses coming. We will announce the winner at the end. If you wanna guess how many shells are in here. Mm -hmm. so once they um, emerge from those shells though, what happens Dr. Lil? Can you show us some of the cicadas that have emerged and what they're doing? Yes, absolutely. So the cicadas, once they've emerged from the shell, then they're adults. After they've rested a little bit, then they're flying off and we can see them all I see a over. lot of the shells just left everywhere. Like right. they're still stuck on the um, blades of grass. They're stuck on a tree, but oh, there's an adult. There's an adult. Oh, wait a minute. Why are there so many up here? So many. So they're, they're just resting. These ones have recently molted and pretty soon they're gonna be flying up to the tree. So let's look up. Everybody look up. There's up? tons of oh cicadas my goodness. up there. You can see them flying around. If you look towards the sun over here, there's a ton of them. They're just flying around. And what they're doing is they're trying to pair up. So this is the mating time for the adults. And remember, they've been all alone for 17 years, and now they get together in this big group, and reproduction is the name of the game. So, what do we hear? Did we talk about the sounds yet? Uh, not really. We just talked about it being loud. Talked about it being loud. So the noise that you hear in the background and in individuals are the male cicadas. So the males have a special organ called a timbal that allows them to make a really loud call, one of the loudest calls in nature. And they- Is this a male? This is a female. That's oh, female. it's a female. She's not gonna make a call. Yep, she's not. He's looking for a male. <laughs> oh, here they are. Oh, you can hear them really good. Miss Lil, I have tons of questions when you're ready. Okay, let's look at the male. Here's the then... male. If you look right behind his wings, there's a little white patch. Do you see that? Oh. That's the timbal. That's mm -hmm. how they make their song. Mm -hmm. So there's three different species of periodical cicadas in this through 10. And they all, the males make songs. So they're making noises. It's their courtship call to attract the females. Wow. Let's look at all the cicadas over here. And now it is time to ask the scientist your questions. So, okay. Miss Gina, what questions do we have? One was already answered about what do they eat, but then we have from Tyler Elementary School, how many types of, how many species are? Is it just one type of cicada in brood eggs? And the other one, um, let me, oh, do they prefer certain trees? Those are awesome questions. So Dr. Lil, 
are they all the same? All of these cicadas, are they all the same? No, there's actually three different species of cicadas. They're all pretty closely related and they occur together in this big swarm known as brood 10. So and what is a brood? A brood is a group of cicadas in a geographical area like here in DC that all emerge every 13 or every 17 years at the same time. So different okay. parts of the country have different broods emerging at different years. So we have brood 10, That's right. but brood 10 has three different species. Three different species. So what, what species are you holding right now? So this is a female and this is Magicicada septum decim. Which How is, can you tell and why are you turning it over to look at it? <laughs> yes, I'm turning it over to look at the abdomen, the last segment on the, on the cicada. And you can see it's mostly orange. So if they have big orange stripes on their abdomen, we know that you have the most common species and also the largest, Magis cicada septum decim. Okay. They also have a little orange patch right next to the red eye, and that helps another clue that you have oh. that species. And then our other question was... Trees. Do they prefer certain trees? Really good question. So other cicadas, and again, someone asked about how many kinds of cicadas there are. There are thousands in the world, actually. We have about 17 different species in the DC area. Um, and um, so- We were thinking that this place had so many cicadas because of the trees that were here. That's exactly right. And so there's a lot of trees and the nymphs have to feed on trees. So they only feed on woody plants underground but they're not really very picky about which species of tree they feed on. What they do like though, is they like places like this that are kind of sunny, kind of open. The trees have a lot this of light. This is just right next to a neighborhood. It's like a local neighborhood park. It's, That's it right. It is open. So the trees are vigorously growing in the sun. Right. So when the females, they're doing the most important job. So all that mating that's happening right now up in the canopy, once the female's mated, she flies off looking for the perfect place to lay her egg. Maybe we could find a female laying egg. See, they're home. getting loud again. Getting okay, Miss Gina, what's our next question? I, okay, so Alba and Bernard question about where to find them was already answered, but we have another one about how dangerous are they? Nora and Londra wondering, do they pinch? Why do people seem to talk too much about them like if they were scared? Yeah, what, is there anything bad about cicadas? Absolutely not. They're one of the most friendly insects that I've ever worked with. And I work with a lot of different insects. They're so easy to handle, gentle to pick them up. You just lightly pick them up by their thorax, put them on your hand, let them crawl around. They don't bite, they don't sting. They're not going to hurt you. They might tickle you a little bit, but that's about it. Yeah, I've they're they're not poisonous. They don't have any toxins. Sometimes I hear people say, but they're going to kill all the trees. Is that true, Dr. Lou? Absolutely not. So they certainly do use the trees. Um, and when the females lay their eggs, they do a little bit of damage to the twigs. But these trees have been growing for a long time through many cicada emergencies, and they're doing just fine. Yep. They are. I have more questions. <laughs> more questions? Yes, go ahead. I'm trying yes. to show you. There's one that is coming up on my neck and it's a little tickly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have some questions from Mario, Kimberly, and Bernard. They want to know something about their life underground. One, okay. when they are little, how many do they shed their skin? And if so, how many times? Or, and Kimberly and Bernard want to know if they are asleep for those 17 years underground. Oh, that's such oh, a, good, a question. good question. Yeah. So they do shed their skin. Every, just like all insects, they have their skeleton on the outside and they need to molt every time they need to grow bigger. And so they have shed four times underground all by themselves. And then the very last time happens above ground. And that's what we were just watching. So, but while, while they're underground, they're not asleep. They're actually pretty busy. They're feeding, they're growing, they're molting, they're digging. They've got a lot of things to do, although it's a very long time. So they're definitely not asleep. They're not hibernating. 
they're doing their job. But are they the all like having a party underground together? <laughs> Actually, that what we think is that they're almost entirely alone when they're underground. Really? So, yeah, Here's so another. They've point. been all alone for a very long time. I so the the nymph that came out of this hole was living all alone for 17 years underground right here feeding on the roots of these trees and now that they're out they're all together it's a pretty much a big cicada party right now mm. oh look at this one this one looks unusual <gasps> oh, oh my goodness, my goodness. let's what? come here in the shade a little okay. bit dr lil just found a really weird looking cicada can anybody see what's wrong with this one? Oh my gosh oh. so instead of its normal abdomen it's got a big white piece of chalk sticking out of its rear end. I think its butt is missing. It Mona is. just asked a question about this. If I saw a cicada without a body, can I hold it? Ah, uh, if you see a cicada without a body or part of its body missing, can you still hold it? Yeah, sometimes they'll even be walking around missing parts of their body. Well, they this don't... one was walking around yep. and instead of its abdomen, it has a big white thing. And what, what is, is that? That, it turns out, is a fungus that's a fungus that attacks specifically the periodical cicadas and it, it the cicada does just fine is walking all around but it's going to spread this fungus to the other cicadas so it's the only specialized enemy of the periodical cicada wow so i want to see if dr lil can find a female that's laying her eggs oh yeah in the last couple of minutes so we're going to keep walking through this park and noticing now i also wanted to show you sometimes you'll see a cicada that doesn't look quite right <laughs> maybe it, it has like smushy wings oops or it's deformed somehow let's look at this one right here at that i have some cool questions now coming so you see a lot of them like that because not all of them survive we got one over positive mm -hmm. oh let's watch that real quick and then <gasps> that's oh, crazy. Crazy. Way too wide. can yeah. we see the holes oh really good yeah where right here look okay oh my goodness so do you see this branch yes, we can it see has it. slits in it this is how small they are it's hard to focus these are the egg nests. Mm. So inside this twig, she has laid eggs and they are gonna hatch when, Dr. Lil? Not for about eight weeks. So later in the summer, maybe end of July, early August. And so all those little babies then are going to hatch and they're gonna drop to the ground. They're gonna burrow in the soil and start looking for a root where they're gonna be feeding until 2038. I like think this is one. another female laying yep. her eggs in the tree. You can see her ovipositor sticking into the branch. Yeah, so let's see if we have a few more questions hmm. while I look to see how our guesses are going. Yes, and I'm so glad that uh, Dr. Lil already answered that these cicadas are not gonna give kids any diseases. So don't worry about that, Mina and Bernard. But there is this question about a special abilities. Do cicadas have a special abilities and do it's, they eat dirt? Do they eat the dirt? No, they definitely don't eat the dirt. They're herbivores, so they eat plants, but they feed on the liquid parts of the plants with their soda straw mouth parts. So they're sipping sap from the roots of the trees. And do they have any special power, a special ability? Well, they make one of the loudest noises in the entire animal kingdom. So that's pretty amazing. So the males can make sounds that an individual cicada can make incredibly loud sounds in order to attract the females. Mm, interesting. Do cicadas mate two times or just once? How many times do they mate? So the females mate only one time, the males try to mate as many times as they can. So they're calling to attract females. That's their main job is reproduction as adults. Mm -hmm. so the males are trying to find lots of mates. The females are just looking for one that has a really good call that she likes. Once she's mated, then her job is to fly off to the twigs to look for a perfect place to lay her eggs. And she looks for twigs that are exactly about the diameter of a pencil. So if you're holding a pencil, that's how big the twigs are that she's looking to lay her eggs. And I think there's a bunch of them there doing it over there. Let's see. Let's take a look. 
I am looking at all of your guesses and these are really, really good. Uh, She's laying eggs right now. Look at her. You can see her ovipositor is stuck into the twig. Wow, okay. so many babies. So we are right at 1030. So we want to thank you so much for joining us for this live stream. And which class is Judah in? Judah, who guessed 313. Oh. Type it in the chat for me, Judah, because you were the closest. That was really good. The actual number was 321 shells. Good job, Judah. So I'm going to keep checking my chat. And if anybody wants to stay on a little bit longer and ask more questions, we are happy to stay. Okay. But if you need to go, have a great day. And thank you for being a friend to cicadas. And hold on. Thank you, everybody. That was so fun. Get to see all of them. They do have another question. How far do they fly, <laughs> Dr. Lil? That's a really good question. So they're not the greatest flyers. They're a little bit clumsy, but they can fly probably, I don't know, at least um, maybe a, a, the length of a football field, about 100 yards or so. But they can stay in the same tree. Mm -hmm. I saw some flying over here. Oh, yeah, you can see them flying in the field. It's hard to see this on the video, but they keep flying and landing on me. So I keep hooking them off of my neck. Oh, and somebody wanted to know, wanted to be an entomologist. Any people that study cicada have a special name? Is there, well, someone who studies insects is called an entomologist. Is there a special name for someone who studies cicadas? Well, there kind of is. So they're in the order Hemiptera, which are the true bugs. They all have sucking mouth parts. And so sometimes people say I'm a hemipterist if you study oh. hemiptera. Here's a beautiful tenoral that Ooh. just emerged. Ooh, this one's just expanding its wings. Look at that. I'm trying to carefully walk around this tree without stepping on them. Ooh. So many cicadas. And this one on my hand, it's just been sitting there for the last couple of minutes. See how gentle they are? So if you want to learn more about how to be a friend to cicadas, you can oops, go to our website, friendtocicadas.org. And we have these um, notebooks that you can download in English and Spanish to learn more about cicadas. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions? Yes, it was We're happy to hang out with you. Yes. And OK, <laughs> we have some people that are even joining now. But oh. the ones that needed to leave, they are leaving. But we have tons of people still. They, what happened yesterday? Because it rained so much. So they oh. are wondering what happened when it rained. Yes, we were a little worried. Like what was going to happen to the cicadas in that horrible storm? Yep. Well, luckily, cicadas are really good at hanging on. So even though it <laughs> rained really hard, my guess is that most of them went under the leaves when it was raining and they grabbed onto the twigs and branches with those pretty- I can see how the nymphs here just were mm -hmm. holding on under leaves when they emerged. They're still stuck there. They're still stuck there and lots of them emerged because they're still fresh. So I'm sure some of them got washed away, but there's more where that came from. Mm -hmm. Cool. There's and there's a class. Like really damaged. Cooper's class has a collection of 903 <gasps> shells. 900? Wow. I wow. wonder how many you, if you collected every shell in this park, you'd probably have thousands. This is another good example of one that didn't quite, you know, emerge for two of them. Yeah. Didn't quite emerge, but they're still alive. They're still going to try to mate. Their wings got a little messed up when they were emerging. Mm -hmm. So don't freak out if you see some that look a little deformed or they have that butt fungus. Mm -hmm. They're all trying their best to survive. Yep. Don't be worried if they crawl up your leg and they tickle you or they land on you. They're very gentle. They can't bite. They can't sting. They're just a little bit tickly. Mm -hmm. Do we have any more questions, Miss Gina? They make the same sounds as grasshoppers. This is the same. Oh, you know, that's a good question. Do grasshoppers make a sound like this? They do not. They don't have timbles, so they don't have a call like this. 
but they can make a clicking noise with their wings, kind of like the female cicadas do. Mm -hmm. Are cicadas the same as grasshoppers then? Definitely not. They're in a completely different insect order. So grasshoppers and katydids and crickets are all in one group. And cicadas are in the true bug group related to stink bugs and aphids and lots of other insects that have totally different mouth parts for sucking juices out of plants. Can we see the mouth part of a cicada? Yeah, I think we can. Let's let's take a look. So the, sometimes people say cicadas are locusts, but they're not. they're not. Locusts are grasshoppers. Cicadas drink sap. So they have this straw. If you look from the, very hard to right see right between here. the front legs, there's a long tube that goes straight down, and that's you, its mouth part. It's in between. There it is, in between the legs. Hold it still. There, there. That's good. That's good. We can see it now. It looks like a pencil. It's like a straw built into its face. That's why it can't bite you because it can only suck sap. Mm -hmm. They don't have any mandibles or jaws. Yep. Okay, so okay, why don't we do three more questions, Ms. Yes. Gina? It can bite you, Ricardo. Now you saw that. And Brachita wants to know how many eggs does a female lay? Excellent question. So with each egg nest that we saw them laying in the twig, they'll deposit about 20, but they make many, many egg nests. So one female can lay up to 500 eggs. So you can see why there's so many cicadas is because they have so many offspring. It's but really if incredible. a female lays 500 eggs, how many of those actually survive? Really good question. So when the nymphs are going to be raining down to the soil later what? in the Rain? What are you talking about, Dr. Lil? Yeah, so those There's one flying. Nests are all up in the trees, and they're going to be hatching later in the summer. And the tiny little nymphs, which are barely visible, about the size of a tiny little white ant, they're going to just drop to the ground oh. and then try to find a way to burrow into the soil. And many of them are going to land on this path or they're going to land in a parking lot or somewhere inappropriate and aren't going to make it. But millions and millions will. And so, so they're going to fall from the trees as little baby nymphs and they just instinctively know to dig into the ground. And that's going to happen when? In later in the summer, in about eight weeks from now. So, so maybe in, in August? Late July, early August. Okay. Yep. And, and what's our next question, Ms. Gina? Next question. Um, eye color. There's been some blue eye color cicada or like a dark color and red. Why do they have different colors? Yeah, so like all insects, uh, eyes come in different colors, but most of them have orange or red eyes. Although when they were nymphs, they had white eyes. Occasionally there's a a genetic mutation that can cause the eyes to turn a kind of a light blue color. It's very rare uh, to find those individuals, but lots of people are looking for them. And we've already seen a few pictures locally from Brood 10 of these blue yeah, eyes. Most cicadas. of them have these red eyes yep. mm -hmm. or they're kind of orangey or red. Right. But I've been looking everywhere in this park for a blue-eyed cicada, and I haven't found one yet, so they're very rare. If you find one, you're lucky. Take a picture of it. Yeah. Cool. More. Can I have one? Send one more? And yeah, one more. About night. What do they do? They sleep at night, or do they their noise level change during the day versus the night? That's a really good question. So... What happens at night with cicadas, that's when the nymphs emerge from the ground and do their molt, because that's when the birds and predators are not around looking for them. The adults, they're usually just hanging out in the trees at night, and eventually when the sun goes down, the noise quiets, because the mating mostly happens in the sun when they're warm during the day. But because there's so many, there's a few that will make noise even in the middle of the night. So we've been hearing them pretty much all the time, or at least a few, but the really loud chorusing happens only during the day. Mm -hmm. Thank well, you. Those are great questions. Yes, we have still people coming in, but we have two questions that are related. It's about preserve, do they have any role on preserving the earth or what do they protect? Two questions on their role in the ecosystem. So what is their role in the ecosystem? Maybe we can look at a tree and think about 
what happens when they all die That's because there's really a lot question. i mean look along the path here these are cicadas that didn't make it they have died maybe they didn't come out of their shells all the way here's a really good view of the abdomen of the septum decim the, with the big orange stripes you know even looking at dead cicadas can help you learn about them um, sometimes you'll just see the wings and that might be a sign that it was eaten by a bird. Wow. So look at this. But at the if base you look the near the base of the tree, that's a lot of cicada shells and dead cicadas. And after they mate, they're all going to die. So why is this actually a good thing for the trees? So all of these dead cicadas are full of nutrients. So they have all kinds of nutrients and there's going to be bacteria and fungi that will break these down, releasing all these nutrients into the soil, which then the tree, which the baby cicadas for the next generation are beginning to feed on, will have lots of nutrients to grow. So all these nutrients are going to go back into the soil and all of the plants are going to get a big burst of nutrition that's going to help them to grow. Look at this sad little guy. Mm. I notice here, like some of the nymphs die, some of the tendrils didn't quite make it, but it's good to know that they are part of the ecosystem and they're gonna return all these nutrients to the soil to help the tree actually grow. So cicadas don't hurt trees, cicadas can actually help trees. Mm. Isn't that cool? Look how many, I don't know if you can see the little white blobs, but there's a lot of cicadas emerging on this tree. Oh, All those little white dots are the tendrils, the adults just emerging from the shells. Mm -hmm. Kind of one of those things, the more we walk around this park, the more we see that they are everywhere. Here's a beautiful one that just emerged. So many. But I still don't see the blue-eyed one. I keep looking. Mm -hmm. We have one more question, Miss Gina. Yes. We have one, when are they gonna, Ricardo is asking, when are they gonna go down and bury themselves again? What happens if two cicadas eat in the same root? And that's a recurring question. And the last one is, what, what do they, when they are adults, do they eat the sap of the trees, the leaves? Okay, so when they fall down to the ground, when? Uh, that will be probably later in the summer, late July, August. Mm -hmm. And then when they, um, what was the second question? Yes, what happened if two cicadas are eating in the same root? Well, that's quite possible that there's more than one cicada on the same root. They're just in separate chambers. What do you think, Dr. Lil? Yeah, they're not, they're probably not right next to each other. So I think they spread out a little bit as far as we know. But there's not actually very much known about what they do underground because it's really hard to see. Mm -hmm. So maybe one of you guys will will study it when you get older and answer that question a little better than we can. Here's one that didn't quite make it. Mm -hmm. It'll probably get eaten by a bird or a squirrel. Mm -hmm. And what was the last part of the, the question? Last question when they are adults, what do yeah. they eat when they are uh, up in yeah. the tree? Really good question. So they don't eat a lot, so they're mostly be done growing, so they don't feed much. But the females, when they lay their nest, sometimes there's fluids from poking holes in the twig, and they'll take a little sip. So the males probably don't feed much at all, but they're, they're capable of feeding as adults, but they don't do very much. So they, but they feed on the same thing. They feed on the, what's called the xylem sap, which is mostly water in the uh, on twigs uh, of the plants. And before we go, nobody asked my favorite question from students, do cicadas pee? Because oh. if you're standing under a tree like this, like I am, it kind of feels like there's a few raindrops coming. Are the cicadas peeing on us, Dr. Lowe? Well, it's not exactly pee, but they do, since they feed on liquid, they, just like any animal, everything that eats has to eliminate some waste. So a few little droplets come out the rear end and might fall on you. So if you feel that, it's just a little bit of liquid tree sap. Cool. Mm -hmm. oh, boy, this is sure fun. We have a lot of more cicadas to look yeah. at. Here's another one. We're gonna enjoy our walk today. And if you wanna find cicadas, look in your closest neighborhood park. You never know where they're gonna be. And 
don't only look in the trees, look into the um, vegetation like this because they like to hang out and it's easy to see them when they're at this level. Mm. And have fun, be a friend of cicadas. Don't be scared of them. They are so amazing. And thank you all for joining us today.